We've been investigating miniatures painted by Isaac Oliver, who was one of the best limners of the late 16th century, um, because he's a really interesting character and not very much is known about him. He's um, supposedly was a pupil of Nicholas Hilliard, who's very well known and wrote a treatise about the art of limning, but Oliver frustratingly never wrote anything about his training or about his work. And so while a lot has been done on Hilliard, because you can compare what he wrote with what he did in his miniatures, um, there's very little that has ever been um, done with Isaac Oliver. He's, a much, um, he's much more of an unknown personality. And that was one of the reasons why we were really interested in him. Luckily, the Fitzwilliam Museum has a small number of uh, miniatures painted by Isaac Oliver so that's how we started working on on him and the results we were getting from the initial analysis were so interesting that we liaised with collections um, across the UK and also elsewhere in Europe and um, these collections have um, granted us the possibility to work on their miniatures as well. So we've been, been doing technical analysis with a number of different scientific methods, including various types of imaging, such as near-infrared and UV imaging, and very detailed uh, photomicroscopy, so we can get really high resolution details of the, the miniatures, which is really important because these objects are very, very small, usually only about five by four centimeters, more or less. Um, and so the details are so minute that it's really hard to appreciate them with the naked eye. We've been using a range of spectroscopic methods to investigate the materials composition of the miniatures, specifically the pigments used by the artist. And uh, one of the methods we've been using a lot is um, XRF, X-ray fluorescence spectroscopy, which gives the um, elemental composition of the pigments. So what we're doing today with the Brooker Elio is performing an XRF scan, which means we get an XRF spectrum at every single point on the miniature, about every millimeter or so. And that's really great because we can only not only identify the elemental composition of various points in the miniature, but we can also get maps of the elements. And that really helps, especially in cases like the one we're investigating now, where the original composition um, was slightly modified at a later time because the pigments degraded and the miniature um, was damaged. And so we have successive layers um, of pigments and it's really difficult to sometimes isolate these layers if you don't have a map. Um, that can help you um, sort of guide your, um, your investigation. So we're really fortunate to be able um, to use the Brooker Elio in this instance um, because our own XRF instrument only does point analysis so we can analyze single points but not get the maps um, which are so helpful um, in finding out what the composition really is across the whole miniature and they're also a great tool for outreach and dissemination of results because images are a great way to disseminate even very complex scientific information. So we're really um, happy that we can do that. And the fact that the ELU is a portable instrument is really key in our case. Despite the fact that we're working at the Fitzwilliam Museum today, so in a museum environment, um, a lot of miniatures collections are actually um, spread out across country houses, for example, or in National Trust properties, in small private collections. So in places where um, it wouldn't be feasible to transport heavy machinery, you know, um, hard big pieces of equipment and it's um, not always appropriate for the miniatures to travel to a laboratory space. They're very fragile objects, they're very um, sensitive to the environment so they need to be kept at a very um, cool temperature and high humidity because they're painted on parchment that is um, animal skin which reacts to humidity in particular very very much. So it's great to be able um, to transport your equipment to the collection rather than than the other way around. Um, and we're finding more and more, not just in research on miniatures, but in our work, for example, on medieval manuscripts as well, that we do a lot of traveling with our equipment.